Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about doing labor transactions in Sage 100 and Sage 100 Cloud production management. Let's take a look at our agenda. So we're going to talk about transaction entry, and then we're going to talk about the different kinds of time entry, including labor entries, miscellaneous time, labor crews, and labor costs. We're going to discuss what dynamic labor is and discuss what the periodic labor register is in regards to integration with payroll. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in Sage 100. Let's go ahead and take a look at miscellaneous labor entry. So I'm gonna to go to work ticket transaction entry. We'll create a batch and create a transaction. And our transaction type here is going to be labor. We'll choose our work ticket. Our posting date will go the lines. And as you can see, this is a very simple entry. We just simply select the step from the work ticket and the number of hours. And then we post that. So let's go ahead and accept that. Hit the printer icon to take the shortcut to the transaction journal. And we'll print this to paperless office. And we'll update it. Now you can see there's our two hours. Our unit cost is $7.50 an hour. And we'll close that and print the daily transaction register. And update that as well. So the general ledger posting is simply a credit to the applied labor account. We've added fixed and variable overhead and we've posted to work in process. Let's go ahead and update that as well. Now, just for fun, let's go look at the work ticket inquiry and see how that looks. So we'll call up the work ticket, go to the inquiry tab, select the labor radio button and you see we have the two hours here. And if we look at our totals, you can see that we have labor costs accordingly. So notice we did not enter an employee there. So this is just miscellaneous labor. We just wanted to record the hours and the cost, and the cost came from the work center set up for that labor transaction. Back on our agenda, now we'll take a look at the different kinds of time entry. So we're gonna start with labor entry, look at miscellaneous time, we'll look at labor crew and labor cost. So let's go ahead and Sage 100, go to labor entry. And this is where you would normally enter your labor. So we'll choose the transaction type labor entry. Now we get to choose the employee and I'll talk about this in a second, but we'll do a look up and choose the employee. We'll choose the work ticket and we'll choose the step. Now notice for this step, we have a budgeted number of hours of one. We haven't done any. And I'm just gonna put in the hours worked here. Now remember our setup options allows us to determine whether we are entering start and stop times to calculate the hours worked or we are just entering hours worked. And I obviously have it set up just to enter the hours worked. We can also put in the description of the work that's been done. And we can also choose a new status code on this step. So we'll go ahead and say completed and we can say the quantity completed is one, and we can accept that. Now, before I post this, let's go ahead and minimize it for a moment, and let's go to work ticket inquiry. Now, remember, I haven't posted this labor transaction, but let's go to inquiry and look at the labor. You can see this transaction's already posted to the work ticket. So we have our one hour, the source is labor entry, for Jerry Thomas, et cetera. And that's because of dynamic labor. So just like we talked about last time with material a dynamic inventory where the material can post directly to the work ticket without updating the transaction, we have the same thing going on here with labor. And once again, this is limited to those users that are on Sage 100 Cloud, but I wanted to show this to you. So let's go ahead and pop out of this, come back to our entry and let's do another one. So this time we're gonna do miscellaneous time. Once again, we'll choose an employee and here we're just gonna choose a labor code. Now you cannot choose regular overtime labor code. So I'll just do sick pay and we'll put in eight hours here. Now this really has to do with integration to payroll 
because if your production management system has full integration with Sage 100 payroll and you're doing these entries in production management, you want to account for time for the employee when they're not working on work tickets. This is how you do this. So when I'm not working on a work ticket, I can enter these miscellaneous time entries. Let's do another one here. We'll do labor crew. So this time we'll choose the cabinet and chassis crew, choose the work ticket and the step number. And when we do this, it's going to recognize all of the members of the crew and post their time accordingly for the crew. Lastly, we'll just do labor costs. So we'll pick a work ticket and a step number, an activity code and a work center and the hours worked. So here, we're not entering an employee, but we are posting costs to the work ticket based on the activity code and the work center. So labor costs is going to come from that work center setup. So this is very much like doing that transaction entry that we looked at originally, except this gives us a little more detail. So in summary, we have labor or time entries here that include employees and some that do not, and some are in relation to integrating with payroll and some are not. Let's go ahead and accept that. And let's go ahead and update these transactions. So I'll go ahead and print to paperless office. And you can see sometimes the rates are different here for the costs. So we had the crew entry for Arthur and Suzanne, we had Alan and Jerry, all of these different transactions. Now, I do want to talk about where the costs come from. And we talked about this when we were going through the production management setup. So remember at the work ticket class maintenance screen, you have an option of posting labor at the work center rate or the employee rate as actual labor costs to the work ticket. So you get to choose that. The budgeted labor is always based on the work center rate because obviously it doesn't know which employee is going to do the work, but it does know what work center the work is going to take place in. But the actual cost can come from the employee and there's types of integrations available to payroll. If you are integrating with payroll, one type of integration is just to integrate with the employees. That is, you, you set up and maintain the employees and their rates in the payroll module and not in production management. But for production management can then reference or pull the employees from the payroll system and then their rates follow the employee. There's also full integration to payroll, which means you are entering time in production management and then you update the periodic labor transaction and that will update to payroll and when you do payroll it will know about all the time that was entered in production management. Let's go ahead and update this. Print the daily transaction register. Applied labor expenses. See the work in process being debited, applied labor being credited across the board here including fixed and variable overhead. Now that we've updated those labor transactions and the daily transaction register, we've seen the postings to the work in process and the applied labor with fixed and variable overhead. Let's go ahead and look at our agenda. So our last thing we're going to talk about is the periodic labor register. And this is the process that you run when you're integrated with Sage 100 payroll. Let's take a look at that. So under time is periodic labor register update. And as you see, when I click this on, I have to create a pay cycle in payroll. It will ask me what the labor cycle is, the period, starting date, any date, and check date, all from payroll here. And then this will push in those production management time entries into the payroll system. And then you can edit the time in Sage 100 payroll before you post payroll, obviously. But all of these time entries that we've done in production management can be pushed into the payroll system from here. So we would just come into the screen, print and update this, and all of those entries will end up in payroll. But you have to have a payroll cycle in process when you do this.
Okay, to recap, we looked at doing labor entry in production management transaction entry. Very simple, quick way to get labor transactions entered into production management. There is no automatic posting to the work ticket. You must print and update the transaction register. Then we talked about doing time entry and the four kinds of time that we can enter. All of these time entries can be affected by dynamic labor. Dynamic labor is just a term that means the time is posted directly to the work ticket before the transaction register is printed and updated. Lastly, we talked about posting to Sage 100 payroll from production management by using the periodic labor register. To contact us, you can find us on YouTube. We're on LinkedIn. Our website is www.nimsassociates.com. You can email us at erp at nimsassociate.com or the phone number 877-454-3200, extension 6346. We really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much.